It feels like every celebrity and their mother has a tequila out today. The Rock, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, George Clooney, Nick Jonas, and Kendall Jenner. And you even have some real heavy hitters like Guy Fieri launching their own tequila brand. But why would so many celebrities get into the tequila game? Could it be that they fell in love with Mexican heritage and culture and the ancestral art of tequila making? Hell no! It's all about the Benjamins, baby! Tequila sales worldwide have grown 6% every single year since 2002, reaching an over $4 billion industry in 2020. And with mega famous, mega beautiful George Clooney selling his brand Casamigos for over $1 billion a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's billion with a B. And on the one hand, you can say that celebrities have made tequila more accessible and more popular than ever before, but the product in their bottles is really not as good as other tequila out there. And I know, I know, I know. Some of you might be thinking, quit being a hater, Louie. You just don't like these people and you wanna trash their product for clout. And I will say, while I have trashed almost every single one of these tequilas, both on my TikTok and here on YouTube, I promise you that this problem runs much deeper than just my personal dislike for LeBron James or Kendall Jenner. And let's get into the first big problem that I see with celebrity tequila, and that's uh, cultural appropriation. Let's start with my bestest, bestest friend, Kendall Jenner, for example. She was lambasted a couple of years ago when she put out a really, really tone deaf commercial promoting her incredible 818 tequila. One of the biggest complaints that people had, it was she was wearing uh, traditional Mexican clothes and she was appropriating Mexican culture to sell this product when she has, when she is not Mexican herself and has no relation to the country other than she wants to make a quick buck. In Mexico, the agave plant is sacred and there are generations and generations of families that have been making tequila for over a hundred years. And it's a huge part of the culture and heritage of Mexico. Most of the celebrity backed brands that we have here they have really almost no connection or ties to Mexico outside of the fact that they rolled up to one of the few distilleries that makes almost all of the celebrity tequila. They pick a barrel that slightly tastes different than the other barrel. They slap their name and logo on it and then they sell it at a high premium price to make money off of it. And you might be thinking, oh, but they're paying these distilleries to make this product. These companies that are owned by, by celebrities, they're not Mexican based. So yes, they are paying the distillers to make this, but when they make that sale of that product around the world, that money doesn't go back to the people who made this tequila. In fact, it just goes into the pockets of these celebrities and it takes out the money from the Mexican economy. Whereas if you had a, a, a distillery that was based in Mexico, all of the sales of that tequila would go out into the world and then it would come back to Mexico. That would actually help fuel the tequila industry in Mexico. But okay, okay. Okay, okay. Maybe you're one of those people who was kind of heartless and he's like, you know what? I don't care about Mexican heritage. I don't care about the Mexican people. I don't care about the Mexican economy. And so you might be thinking, so what? These celebrities are just trying to make a dollar just like everyone else. But celebrity tequilas aren't just infringing on Mexican culture and taking money out of Mexico. They are also directly contributing to a whole host of other issues in the agave industry, as well as producing some truly awful tequila. But to explain that, we first need to dive into how tequila is actually made. Making tequila is a very, very labor intensive and lengthy process. Firstly, the agave plants that they use to make tequila, they usually need to grow for up to eight or nine years before they reach full maturity to get cultivated to then make the tequila. That's a small child's life before you're able to actually make what goes into one of these bottles. And the reason it takes that long is that it takes nine years for the sugars to fully develop inside of the agave plant so that it could then get fermented and then distilled and turned into tequila. If you wanna know more about the full process of how, what tequila is, I have an entire video that you can check out because I don't wanna get too deep into that right here. So what does that have to do with celebrity tequilas? This influx of so many celebrity brands into the market and the demand for that has been putting intense pressure on the tequila industry. It's been prompting tequila producers to produce more tequila faster. And to make more tequila, you need to plant more agave. And to plant more agave, you need more farmland. And so this is actually leading to a lot of deforestation uh, to make way for agave plantations. And it's also contributing to issues with uh, wildlife, such as with bats, and this pressure to create more tequila has caused a skyrocket in the price of agave. You know, it takes not about nine years to fully grow and mature. And because the demand is so high for so many producers making so many different kinds of tequila, uh, a lot of smaller tequila producers are kind of getting priced out of the market. And it's also causing 
the price of tequila as a whole to go all the way up. A lot of these tequilas that are being produced for celebrities, uh, they're all made in essentially one or two distilleries, and these distilleries are not exactly known for their best practices when it comes to producing tequila. Some of these producers are harvesting agave at four to five years old to speed up the process, but that hasn't given the, the agave enough time to create all of the sugars that it needs to be turned into tequila. And the producers to fix this lack of, uh, of sugar in the agave, they'll then go back and add uh, additives to these tequilas before bottling them and releasing them, making less pure and lower quality tequila as a whole. By law, tequila is controlled by a uh, governmental part of Mexico called the CRT, and they actually allow for additives of up to 1% in any bottle of tequila, and they don't have to list it or tell anyone. And these four additives that they can use is glycerin, oak extract, caramel coloring, and sweeteners. And so these brands can claim to be 100% agave, but have up to 1% in additives. And so I think someone's not good at their maths here because that does not seem to add up. And the irony is that while originally the additives were done to correct small, small minor inconsistencies, because these distilleries that are making all of these different brands for all these different celebrities, these additives are actually what they're using to differentiate one bottle from another. And how do I know this? Well, in tequila, there's something called an NOM. It's a number that you can find on every single bottle of tequila. Uh, it's on the usually on the back, and you can put this on into a website such as Tequila Matchmaker, and it'll show you what is being produced at that distillery, it'll show you the rating on that distillery, and it'll show you what other brands are being made there. And again, of course, it's not just a celebrity problem. There are other brands that have additives and they do make bad tequila. But the biggest issue is that celebrities are popularizing this bad, crappy tequila. Instead of people going out and buying a bottle of Fortaleza Reposado for about 60 to $70, they're going out and buying a bottle of this crap for the same price. And this is garbage water in comparison to this amazing, delicious spirit. The celebrity power behind it is popularizing and changing the palate of people in the US to want these over-sugarfied, disgusting spirits while they're culturally appropriating uh, Mexican culture and heritage so that they can make money and people think that this is good stuff. But in reality, you should be drinking stuff that's 100% additive free and made by people who know what they're doing, do it for love and have been doing it for hundreds of years. And so how do you know what tequila you should be drinking that doesn't have additives, is made the right way? That same website, Tequila Matchmaker, they have an entire list of 100% verified additive free tequilas. And it's kind of becoming a uh, somewhat gold standard within the industry so that you know which tequilas don't have additives and which ones are made the right way. The other method is I have a video right over here that you can watch on the three best tequila out right now.